I was thinking again about Pastor Tracy's message about Zacchaeus. Uh, I believe that was last week. Climbing up in the, in the tree. And how amazing is Jesus with this giant crowd of people that he picks Zacchaeus, come on, to spend time with because he was on a path of destruction. Come on, he was headed to hell, right? And I'm thinking about... Um, you know, Mary, that he cast out seven demons. I'm thinking about all these people that are were in his life that were far from God, that were in dire need. They were in bondage. Let's say that bondage. Just like this world. But you know what? Jesus came for those that are in bondage. Amen. To set at liberty those that are bound and bruised and broken. And so... I was just amazed at meditating on all the people that I know that he has liberated this year. All the people, even in our reigning women meeting, I'm just so excited about what God is doing, liberating women from horrific bondages, horrific abuses, horrific backgrounds, and even those that have just been, you know, just numb. And Jesus came for such, come on. For such, he said, I came. And when people were saying, you know, why are you hanging out with these sinners? And you're hanging out with tax collectors. It's very interesting because there was a transformation upon contact with Jesus. Come on, I want you to remember that today. That when Jesus engages you, there's always freedom and liberty. That's the reason he comes. Amen. And so... Zacchaeus said, he stood up and he said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions. Not later, but here and now I do it. I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Come on. Full coverage, full interest, and then some. There was true transformation that came. And you know, it's amazing because here Zacchaeus took it. Let's say that he took it. He took the, the precious mercy and grace and goodness of Jesus that Jesus extended to him. Amen. He took it completely and he said, Jesus, come and stay at my house. I would love for you to come and eat at my house. Jesus had said, you know, I have to be with you at your home. And he received him in. And he received complete redemption, complete transformation with the actions following. So I was looking up this, this scripture in the Bible that says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Amen. He came for that. Stand firm then. So you think, well, that's the end of it. Jesus sets us free. But then the Bible says, stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. How intense is that? He has set us free. Ooh, that's a powerful word. To liberate. To make us exempt. Wow, that's a powerful. That's the original meaning. To make us exempt. I don't know if you've ever been exempt from something, but that's nice when you realize, oh, I'm exempt from that. I don't have to worry about that. That's not for me, right? I don't even have to do anything about that. I'm exempt. And then it's also a uh, means to persevere and to be stationary. Come on, not budging an inch, not budging an, an inch. You know, uh, I, I like to teach on this one pillar of victory. That is, we start at victory. Come on. The Bible says we go from victory that Jesus paid to victory. Come on, that we grasp with him. That he bought us liberty and freedom and victory. We go from victory to victory. So here the Bible is saying that we need to be stationary in our victory. The devil has come with a lot of deceit, a lot of identity lies, a lot of uh, trickery to make people believe, especially young people all over the world, to believe 
that they are something other than what God has made them to be, what God said about them. Amen. But you and I are God's warriors to set the captives free and let them know who they really are. Amen. And to speak to those spirits of confusion and they must go with one word. But I want you to grasp this today. This is my little portion to add to this time in the Lord. Be stationary in your victory. Don't think like, oh my goodness, I'm so defeated and it's going to take me years to get over this. No, remember that Christ has set you free. Let's stand up on our feet. Today, we are going to stand in the victory of the Lord. Amen. Let's say this together. Father God, what you say about me is the truth. It is the way. It is the life. Jesus came that I might be in victory, that I might be in liberty, that I may enjoy freedom. I take it back. I remember whose I am. I remember who you made me to be. I'm a child of the Most High. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above all that's going on in demonic realms and in the earth. I am ruling and reigning with Christ Jesus. Whatever I declare that is in heaven, it comes here on earth too. In Jesus' name, I declare I am free. And everyone I pray for becomes free. Me and my house, we are saved. We are free. We are the redeemed. I'm royalty in Christ Jesus. He has made me the head and never again the tail. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's welcome Pastor Tracy. I want to talk about the greenhouse effect today. The greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect in the, this, the terms of the world is that there's a um, greenhouse effect where the, the earth and that which is in the ozone layer is increasing in heat and the temperature of the earth is increasing because of the amount of technology we use. We are changing the way the world is, is actually functioning. Okay, that's the greenhouse effect. I want to talk to you about the greenhouse effect from the kingdom of God perspective. Not literally that thing, but how your life can heat up in God. Right, there's a, and, and it starts with this, a couple statements, if I can read them. Uh, there's a difference between walking in and living in the freedom of the blessing and living in the restriction of the curse. There's a difference. There's a difference because sometimes we say, I am blessed, but we're not actually living in the blessing. We're actually living in restriction. If you're living in the blessing, the blessing is constantly making you free on a consistent basis. I'm freer today than I was yesterday. I may not be completely free to the level, but I'm understanding still the blessing that I'm walking in. And so with greater revelation, I get greater freedom. So every day I'm freer because every day a greater revelation of the blessing on my life is increasing. If I still relate to yesterday's blessing on my life, then I'm missing the fact that I am in an ever-increasing blessed life. Restriction means the blessing is not completely functioning. And I'll show you this in scripture. You can have the blessing on your life, but still live in restrictions of the curse. I've, I had a conversation with a good friend of mine, and he was like, We're, the curse is gone. The curse is completely gone. And I said, yes, the curse has been taken and eradicated by Jesus. But the mindset of a cursed life is not gone. The mentality is what we are mostly struggling with, not the fact that we actually have a cursed force, voodoo, working against us. I'm not concerned about voodoo, hoodoo, or any other doo-doo. Because we know who that has the authority. The thor Someone say, I have authority. There's a lot of witchcraft and a lot of witches in this, this, this territory of the Northwest. And we live here happily, sleep well. Sometimes I wake up and have to cast out stuff. That's just because it needs to be reminded. Especially, you know, depend depending who's delivering my Amazon food or whatever. 
I, I just say you came too close to the house. You got to go. You got you got to go. Take your familiar spirits on with you, right? So we got. But you got to be able. But it's not like I'm. There's no like concern because I have authority. When you have authority, you don't have concern. It's the people who don't know they have authority that get concerned. But when you stand in your authority, you know your authority, you understand your authority, you know that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And if Jesus is living inside of you, let him stand up big so he can be Lord. Let Jesus fully stand up inside of you. I want him to be like that, like, like that little baby that's stretching out. Come on, just like you see the feet coming out. Because they're trying to fool the full capacity. Let Jesus have the full capacity of your life. And, and the next thing I want you to know is if you and I can declare, I'm blessed. But if you're not free, you're not blessed indeed. See, the blessing is about making you free, not just by a declaration. I have a, I have a couple of plants. My, my wife and kids gave me these plants, you know, these pepper plants. And then Kim gave me two little pepper plants and little, little habaneros. And they're seed, seed, you know, seedlings and saplings or whatever you call them. They're like little. They don't have any fruit on them because they are little. But my anticipation is that they're blessed, meaning that they're going to grow until fruit manifests. Yeah. When fruit manifests, they'll be like these, which have grown indeed to manifest fruit. See, the indeed is that you actually manifest the fruit that you've been anticipating. The perspective is that everybody has the potential of blessing, but until you have the fruit of blessing, you are not indeedly blessed. Can I say indeedly? Not indeed blessed. And so we see this. We see this. We have to understand this. We are satisfied with the proclamation. I'm blessed. But we need to get dissatisfied with the lack of fruit of a proclamation. Is anyone going to be here with me today? I'm blessed. See, I want to say, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Ooh, I'm blessed when they come and when they go. Right? But the fact is, is I actually need to be blessed in the city. How do you know? Because when you go, I'll, I'll take you to my penthouse. I need to be blessed in the field. How do you know? Because when you go and we're going to look at our crops. Right? So there's going to be, there has to be fruit on your tree that goes beyond, I am a sapling. The sapling is blessed. That's a blessing. I'm blessed to have them because I love habaneros. They're just like my jam. But the fruit is going to be blessed indeed. Do you understand what I'm saying? The indeed aspect is what Christians need. We have the blessed aspect. We have the projected aspect. We have the promise of aspect. But having a promise and only having a promise and not having fruit, that is not worthy of you going to heaven and not bearing fruit before you get there. Doesn't mean you're not going to get there. But why have a promise that you can't fulfill in heaven? You can only fulfill here. You living a blessed life is nothing to do with your heaven. Has to do with heaven coming here, but has nothing to do with you going to heaven. It's the Abrahamic blessing. It's the Abrahamic covenant. It is the fact that Abraham's blessing and covenant, that the, 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 the gospel that was preached to Abraham is the fact that we should have fruit in our lives. When it says that when everything in our lives says we don't have fruit. Everything in Abraham's life said he should never have fruit. And Jesus took on this same blessing. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm just setting up. Is this, this is a good setup, though. We're not going to be in the season of anticipation, but not actualization. The Maslow's triangle of psychological ascension has to do with going from me just simply being in a position where my, my appetites are controlling my life where I'm, I'm literally, my first thoughts are cannibalistic and or not cannibalistic, but, but carnal in the sense that I'm just trying to think of what to eat if I'm safe, yeah. right? That safety and protection and provision are the two lowest of the Maslow's pyramid. 
So when you understand that most people live in this, am I safe? Am I provided for? The problem that we have right now in our society is that's what everyone wants the political realm to do and your kingdom relationship with God to do is just to make you safe and make you provided for. But then the next stage is I have to go above that, that I am now someone who is belonging and feeling loved. Feeling and giving love. That's the next two. And then I have to come into this place where I am becoming who I am supposed to be and I'm self-actualized. I realize the fullness of Christ standing up inside of me. Now, if we never grow in that, we are never changing in that. We have to transform in that. We have to become better today. If you're still as hungry as you were yesterday and you're not eating better, then there's a problem with your system. So not just anticipating but also actually stepping into it, actualization. Giving uh, bones and flesh to the blessing. All right, John chapter 8. I'll give you Bible now. We're going to just, it's all scripture from this point on. You ready? Uh, John chapter 8, verse 31. We, we, we read this last week. We're going to jump right in verse 31. It says, then Jesus said to those Jews who believe who believed him if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed what is the first word he says abide the way the only way that these plants that i have will increase is if they abide in certain things right lots of water soil sunlight if if any of those aspects are taken away from them the source that causes them to grow in the blessing is removed You understand? Our Christian life is pretty simple. If we don't read our Bibles, if you don't pray, and if you don't lock yourself into the church, the body of Christ, and get connected, then you are really not going to flourish. It's a simple strategy. God, we can go through every single thing. The only things that survive are things that have greater source supplying it. I'm not expecting the blessing to come from my supply. I'm expecting the blessing to come from his supply. And everything that I'm telling you about the plant comes from an external supply that it knows how to use, but doesn't know how to create. You are going to know how to use the blessing, but not know how to create it. All right, so he says this. He says, if you abide in my word, so we know the word of God is there. We have to put the word in it. Then you're my disciples indeed. There's this word indeed for sure, absolute truth, complete, now manifesting discipleship, not just saying I am. The fruit of discipleship. All right? Every time we see the word indeed, we'll just make this law. Every time we see this word indeed in the New Testament, we're going to say fruit. Or, or think in our mind, fruit, fruit, fruit. I will have fruit if I abide. I'll be a fruitful disciple if I abide. I'll be a growing and producing disciple if I abide. Right? This is the point. You can't say you're a disciple if you're not producing. Discipleship is not learning how something works but never producing it. There's a lot of people that go through discipleship training and all they do is learn education in the Bible, but never produce discipleship fruit. No one's getting saved. No one's getting healed. No one's getting delivered. Buildings are not being a, a, a built by Jesus, for Jesus. Things are not happening. Organizations are not turning around because discipleship is not proving itself indeed. Well, why? Because the word is the only thing that gives you the indeed process. Of that. Now, verse 32, and you shall know the truth. Someone say, know it. It's a knowledge. Truth can be known. Remember Pontius Pilate, Jesus is in front of him, and this whole conversation. We're going to come back to this in a couple of weeks, but he says, What is truth? Who can know the truth? This is what kind of the, the, the you know, relative truth that happened in the last few years. They destroyed the revelation that there is a truth. And so when you take this idea and you say, well, there's no real truth, we can make up our own truth, then you make up the fact that discipleship, you don't know what fruit to look for. Or in any aspect that you've been trained, you don't know what fruit to look for. 
You must know a truth in order, you're gonna, in order to have the fruit of it. I did not get a, a, a picture of what the fruit looks like in any of these plants that I received. None of them came with pictures. They came with just words. And so, so I'm like, I don't know what they look like unless I see a picture. And that picture tells me what the truth is. Jesus came as the front of the box. Until Jesus came, all we had a bunch of words descri- describing what a son and a daughter of God looks like. We had, right, you know, we had, we had 613 laws that told us what a son, and God, son of God and a daughter of God looked like, what discipleship looked like. That's why it's Abraham's blessing, because a discipleship looked like Abraham. You understand? So then we had to have a picture on the box, because when I went to look up, I went and looked up, how do I, how do I take care of the habaneros? And then it showed me habaneros, and then it showed me what it should look like and what color they should be. And I, I actually plucked one of, the, you know, one of the peppers really early, and it didn't have any flavor. And I'm like, Ugh. And they said, well, you know, you plucked it too early because you didn't know what you were looking for in the fullness of its stretching out in its potential and who it was going to be. So you don't have the flavor of it. It has no heat in it because you still don't know what you're looking for because you don't know the truth. You don't know the truth. You take things outside of its season. You don't know the truth. You misunderstand a lot. I found out that I literally, now I know after research and studying and looking at what a jalapeno looks like when it's completely ready to pluck because they're thick, man. They look good, but they're not ready to pick because there's something that needs to happen to it that's visible that shows that it's actually mature enough to eat. There's something about you that needs to be visible to us for us to know that you are a mature disciple. Well, I'm a disciple. It's just me and Jesus. No, it's not. Because the point is, is that you are part of the body and we're supposed to see your body grow. All right, that's just discipleship. Verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. There's a making free. That means I can't make myself free. And this is what I want to bring to you, is that today the blessing is going to flood itself through you, but you've got to allow it to make you. You're going to have to have mindsets that flow with it, not mindsets that resist it. People say, well, how come I'm not blessed? It's because your whole mindset is a closed off system that does not allow the blessing to flow through it. You've closed the blessing off. Doesn't mean the blessing is not for you. You've closed the blessing off because you have a closed mind. Your mind is set on something that the blessing doesn't flow in. And if the blessing flows this way in me, then I'll be blessed. But if you want the blessing, you've got to know how the blessing flows. And you've got to open up your mindset and set your mind to the blessing coming your way so that you can live the blessing. The cursed life is an anticipation that something is going wrong. A blessed life is an anticipation that something's going right. Come on, somebody. Something is about to work out for me. All right, so this is just the first part of this thing here. So in verse 33, it says here, I'm going to come back to make you free, okay? Because the blessing is not freedom until you're manifesting freedom. Manifest freedom. I'm no longer cussing. You're like, praise the Lord, amen. Kim says Amen. <laughs> I'm no longer cussing. Why? Because, I, because the Lord told me not to? No. I felt like there was a, a, a little something that didn't fit. I mean, I mean, that's what conviction is. That's what that feeling. There's something, it doesn't fit you. It doesn't fit your, it's not me. I felt like it wasn't me. I felt like living a life of condemnation was no longer me. It just wasn't me because I didn't feel myself. I felt restricted. I didn't feel blessed. I felt restricted. And I know that anything that makes me feel restricted is the curse. Anything that makes me feel restricted is the curse. God has made a Rehoboth, a wide open place for me. 
And it's, he's given me freedom to live in the, in the blessing in that wide open place because the blessing doesn't look for escapes of restriction or escapes of, from the blessing or from a lifestyle that the blessing cooperates with. All right. So here we go. Verse 33. We're having a Bible study today. Is it okay? I appreciate all the amens. Even though we're reading and talking a lot, let's just amen. Keep it going. Let's just keep it going. They answered him. They answered him. They had something to say to him. It's like, at that point, you should just be quiet. Jesus is speaking. They had something to say to him. This is the mindset that doesn't allow discipleship and blessing to come to you. We are Abram's or Abraham's descendants. We have never been in bondage to anyone. To anyone. Now, this is the amazing because we know that at this very moment that they're saying it, they're in bondage to Rome. At this very moment, they're saying it. We're in bondage. They are having to, they're going to, they're going to have to pass Jesus, the one that they want to crucify, to Pontius Pilate. They're going to have to submit, everything they do is submitted to another ruler, and yet Abraham's mindset, come on, the mindset of the blessed one is we're not cursed. We're not restricted. Come on, it's the right mindset, but they need to have it indeed. They have it blessed. I'm blessed and I'm favored. God's all my life. God, we've never been in bondage. You should have this. Even when you're struggling with something, you should have the mindset, it doesn't master me. It doesn't control me. It's not my destiny. It's not my purpose. It's not who I'm called to be. Come on, somebody. It's not what my destiny is. It's not God's plan. God's thought. I'm not supposed to be restricted by it. I'm not supposed to be controlled by it. I'm not supposed to be identified by it. It's not me. I love this because this is the Abrahamic covenant. The Abrahamic covenant is you are never, ever, ever controlled by anything because you are controlled by God. And they knew that by principle. By principle. Someone say by principle. But the realization is we have to go past principle. And this is what Jesus says to them. You can't just stay in the principle of being a blessed people. We are, we've never been in bondage. How can you say you will be made free? Well, one day they needed to be free from Rome. The reason, the reason they will not give up Gaza. They will not give up any of the lands that some of the people want them to give up is because God told them it was theirs. And as long as God told them, they have decided by Abraham's blessing, we're going to fight for it, we're going to stand for it, we're going to keep it. And do you know if one Israeli is captive, do you know if there's one under a cave anywhere, it's that one Israeli, one, is as if all of them are in the cave. That's the mindset of the Abrahamic blessing. The blessing is that if I am not doing well, then the whole is not doing well. If you're not doing well, the whole is not doing. There is no individual. This is why David got in trouble for counting. It was not for him to count. You don't make Israel individual. You make Israel one. The Lord thy God is one. His people are one. We, oh, come on, somebody. We are one. And people don't understand this. Why are they fighting? Why don't they give it up? Because you are carnal in your mind. You see yourself individualistic, but you need to see yourself as a whole. The whole world, the whole body, everything needs to change because you are in a breakthrough moment. So everything experiences breakthrough. Why when Sarah had a baby, when Sarah in, was, in, was impregnated, when Sarah was, was, was impregnated, she received, she conceived that day, the whole village women get conceived and there was many babies born that day because when one gets their breakthrough, everybody gets their breakthrough. When one is struggling, everybody is struggling. 
I will sorrow with those who sorrow, and I will rejoice with those who rejoice. We need to get back to the Bible, get back to the Word of God. We are one body, one people, one in Christ. 